A Love and Sex at Work Guide Love and Sex at Work Love and Sex at Work slash Office Romance 1 While anyone can flirt in an office setting, the majority of amorous interest at work comes from men coming on to single and married women. Some are harmless flirts, others are abusive, sexual harassment, while still others are sincere in their search for love. I personally feel that you can't legislate a sterile workplace without love and sexual attraction but you can put forth a rule that states that workplace romances must be done discreetly and not disrupt the workflow otherwise they will be dealt with as workplace violations. The issue is where to draw the line. If two employees start a romance, that's fine but if they talk love talk at work, send each other email love letters, kiss and hold hands on company time, that's a no-no. In fact, studies have shown that it's the managers themselves who often do a lot of flirting in the workplace. It could be their position. They may use it to get chummy with subordinates. If romance happens naturally, fine. If it's forced, think twice. Stay away from the boss unless he initiates and is single. Start slowly. Avoid lovey-dovey emails because they're probably being recorded. If the boss comes onto you and is married, he might try to hold a carrot out implying you will be promoted if you sleep with him and be fired if you don't. This is sexual harassment. Buy a small tape recorder that you can hide and try to catch him saying things like this to you so that you can file sexual harassment charges against him. The workplace is a great place to meet people but these days you have to be wary of harassment therefore follow some rules of engagement at least until you get to know someone. Don't talk about your personal life, sexual jokes or compliments beyond the job at hand. No touching except for the firm handshake. Romance and the office aren't mutually exclusive. Just be discreet about what you do. You spend so much time at work that it's only natural that a lot of people meet there and get married. You share a common ground, the workplace, you already know your co-workers so the next step is going out together. There's nothing wrong with people meeting, falling in love and marrying but keep your private life private. If you fall in love with someone at work, that's fine but don't let the relationship interfere with your work. Even if you're in deep love, be discreet during office hours. When employees display their affection for each other in openly inappropriate ways, the boss should step in, tell them in private that what they're doing is disruptive and warn them if they do it again they will be put on probation. If there is sexual harassment, confront the offending employee even if no one has, as of yet, complained about him. Put him on probation. Warn him in writing that he will be terminated if he doesn't smarten up. Document all cases of inappropriate behavior when you see it. Simply write out what you saw, when and who was present. Don't get involved with a member of the opposite sex who's married unless you're looking for trouble and to possibly lose your job. Don't talking about your sex or love life to other people in the office. It's not gossip central nor a psychiatrist's office so shut up. Don't engage in flirtations you don't plan to follow up on and don't take flirtations by acting all giddy. Ignore them this should give the flirter the message. Be very careful about getting involved in relationships with your boss or with anyone you work with day by day. If it doesn't work out, imagine how you'd feel if you had to work with him or her after a breakup. If it gets too uncomfortable and one of you has to leave, it may have to be you. Don't ogle the girls at work. Being gawked at makes most people uncomfortable. If this happens to you, are you enabling it by wearing inappropriate clothes at the office? It's best to play the 50-50 deal with everyone, half open and nice, half business and distant and watch the provocative body language. Check office regulations. Use discretion. Watch out for PDA, public displays of affection. Don't let your romance jeopardize your job. Don't put yourself in the situation where you will get caught doing it in the supply closet. I heard of one guy who got caught having phone sex by himself in his office. Don't do anything risque at work. You never know when a hidden camera is watching. There's a male-dominated sexist attitude in the workplace where the men check the women out and talk about them but women play the game too by wearing overly sexy clothes and gossiping about cute male co-workers. 
it's always best to be nice, wear nice clothes and smile but don't be too overt about it. If you're seriously interested in someone, ignore office rules if there are any because love supersedes a job any day but at the same time be discreet about what you're doing. The operative word for romance at work is distraction. Even though I'm of the belief that lovers should be professional and businesslike at work, most new lovers will not heed my advice. Love and sex at work slash office romance too. If you, as a boss, catch two lovers sending emails to each other even though they sit less than 30 feet apart or catch them smooching in the back room, don't back off. Tell them work is for work. There's plenty of time afterwards to do what they want. Maybe it's hard to focus on work while your lovey pie works right alongside you but you had better realize where your bread and butter comes from and know what your priorities are. In some cases, an office romance can raise animosity from others who don't want to deal with a couple of adults acting like love-struck kids. Office romances can backfire if your crush doesn't respond back or if you have a relationship and it goes sour so be wary before going in. Some people are attracted to someone at work but are afraid to ask them out because if they say no, they will still have to work with them and it will be embarrassing so the thing to do is not to ask for a full-fledged date, just ask her if she wants to walk down to the snack bar with you, have a coffee together or go to lunch with you and your other co-workers as a group then if she really likes you, she will let you know by smiling at you, saying she feels good around you, jutting her tits out at you standing close to you, etc. It's fine to flirt, just be discreet about it. Nobody can legislate the birds and the bees so don't worry about breaking any rules. It's just people living their lives. If you want to get involved with somebody, above all be a good worker since that's what you're there for. Try to make friends with everyone so that you can network with them and meet their friends, possibly going out to socialize after work which is the best place to pursue a romance, with your co-workers at the bar or the restaurant after work not while at work. Try to keep the two separate. Pursue romance with your co-workers, just do it after work or during your breaks. Approach everyone as a good helpful worker. Make friends first then when you get into a situation where you're alone together, you will see if the target of your affections asks you out. If you really like someone, tell your co-workers and the word will eventually get back to your target. If you get involved in inter-office dating, be respectful of the other person's position. Are you the subordinate who feels jeopardized to go out with the boss or vice versa, the boss wanting to hook up with that cute, fresh young secretary? Either way, think about it first then tread lightly, otherwise you could find yourself staring the wrong way down the end of a sexual harassment charge. If you want to get involved, think in the back of your mind whether you can afford to lose your job if it came down to it. Examine your own motives for pursuing the relationship. Be ready for office gossip. In some jobs, there are many more women than men such as secretaries in an office building or teachers especially in a lower grade school so you will have to size up your competition and be subtly assertive with the one you've got your eye on. Watch your quarry for a while to see if he's worth it. Learn about his lifestyle from other people and maybe hang around with them so you can meet him through them. If he plays tennis, start playing too. Find out where he plays, go and accidentally bump into him there. Whatever you do, play it cool, do your job well. If he works close to you, he will probably be checking you out too. Stay calm and wait for the right opportunity to meet him. Be casual. Greet him casually. Make small talk. If he's interested, he will talk back unless he's shy and nervous then you have to break him out of his shell which could be tough. Try to work with him alone to befriend him slowly over time first. Elevators are good places to be conveniently stuck with someone alone or to be conveniently waiting when someone gets on or off. Don't limit yourself to co-workers. If you're the boss, check out your subordinates or if you're a subordinate, check out your boss. The job hierarchy is an artificial distinction. Underneath it, we're just people living our lives so anything's fair game with any other human being. If you want to romance your boss, be a good worker and show interest in the field. In the building you work in, 
look for the best places to meet your quarry like in the parking lot, park near his car, lounge area, elevator, coffee area, concession stand, cafeteria, bus stop near work, office parties, business lunches, business meetings, and extracurricular company activities like team bowling, etc. If you see someone you like waiting for the bus, offer them a lift. If you're going for donuts, drop by his office and ask if anybody wants donuts. Get a business card that you can pass around when you meet people. Don't go overboard on dress but make it obvious that you're single and looking. Make your office look single like a picture of your pet and that's it with maybe a cute message about being single and available. Try to have gum, stationery or coffee around such that people come to you to ask you for these things. Try to have your desk or office in a high traffic area. Be the sociable one, always making small talk with everyone you come across. If you're genuinely looking for love, that's fine. If you're trying to sleep your way to the top or a gold digger, you might develop a reputation as such. If you're promiscuous, you will develop a reputation as the company slut. Guys gossip like that too so be careful if you're dating several guys from the office either all at the same time or one after another. Pick only guys you really consider as possible marriage material. When you date, be discreet. Don't gossip to your co-workers about your relationship because it will get around and your lover will know you've been gossiping about him to other people. Be pleasant around the office like normal lovers but don't openly show your affection. It's not appropriate. People don't want to know about it or get caught in the middle. You can duck into a back room to smooch but don't say too much or smooch too much around others. People get jealous or just don't want to deal with it. Legally. As far as I know, if your company specifically has a no dating rule and slash or a no spouse rule, you can be fired for either and you will lose in court if you sue them. If you're under the no dating rule, fall in love with someone at work and get married, be wary about your job security. The company is supposed to inform its employees about dating and spousal rules when you start working there. If you feel you have a case for being laid off because you fell in love on the job, Check with an employment lawyer. Some court decisions are siding with couples because it seems like ridiculous rules that companies have prying into the personal lives of their employees. Your best bet is to check the company rules before you try an office romance. If you have problems, your union might be able to help you. At the other end of the spectrum, if someone comes onto you at work and you're not interested, be polite but firm and tell them you're not interested. If they persist, it's grounds for sexual harassment. Document the incidents, try to get witnesses and report them to your boss. If it's your boss, go to his boss or your union, seek out an employment lawyer or call the police. Love and sex at work slash office romance 3. If you work in an office and want to meet that certain other person, make up an envelope of generic reference material, Sign his slash her name to it and hand deliver it to your prospective mate saying you found it somewhere. Or set up a coffee pot near your desk so you meet all the people in the area who want coffee. If you're really into it, bring a cappuccino machine to work and treat all the prospective young ladies, that is, if you're a man. Send a gift to your love interest from a secret admirer with a little note explaining such and make it something like a cross necklace to match the one you always wear a little froggy cuddly thing like the one on your desk or a special pen that looks just like the one you use so that they can figure it out and make the next move if they so desire with no loss of face either way. Or just send a note slash gift and let them figure it out. The easiest way is the old fashioned way, blab it out to your friends who will blab it all around until the object of your desire gets wind of it then you can both play office politics until you're suddenly working together alone in the same room. But what if it's a no-go? Well, there wasn't much loss of face either way. Just forget it and move on. If you see someone you like at the office, find out their name then whenever you see them, greet them with a hey Joe. They will be puzzled as to how you know them but keep doing it. Find out something about them then start a conversation with a flattering statement sometime like heard you went fishing last weekend. It will flatter him that you took the time to learn something about him when he doesn't even know you. 
Look around your office building then make excuses to go to the office where all the young ladies work but don't come on too strong otherwise you will get a reputation as a skin dog. Find out where that someone is having lunch, ask co-workers, then meet her there accidentally. Perhaps start an office sports betting pool or a lottery pool, everybody puts in a buck, you buy X number of lottery tickets and if you win, you split the prize evenly, so you can go around and meet the people you work around. After you make several friends, have a little party and ask them to invite some of their friends. If you're a man who works in an office, keep fresh flowers on your desk as a feminine touch and hand them out to pretty females. The modern day workplace can be a sexually charged place with people working in close proximity becoming attracted to each other leaving them in a quandary because they may be married or living in prescribed roles that would make a sexual relationship unwise and slash or awkward, i.e., the big boss who's really a sex fiend but he has to put on that phony authoritative, in control face. The traditional norm is to either repress and downplay it or have the affair but perhaps a better approach would be to become better friends but both be mature enough to realize that you will never become sexually intimate. Instead of repressing your attraction, culture it as a platonic friendship. That's the most mature way to deal with it. If it becomes sexual, you may be bringing a whole new can of worms both into your personal and working lives so think before you act. Will it really be worth it? If you can swing it, try to be good friends with that attractive, sexy co-worker. An employment lawyer suggests that you get a legal agreement if you decide on an office romance so that if it fizzles and you the woman get terminated, you won't sue him for sexual harassment or he won't be bound to offer you anything like preferential treatment but this is easier said than done, as tough as trying to get your future wife to sign a prenuptial agreement. If you want discretion, don't ever send emails, notes or anything like that. They have software that saves everything you do on the computer. Send her a dozen unusual flowers like peach roses and put one on your desk. She will probably figure out it was you. Easiest way to meet someone in an office is to put yourself in an office or a situation where everyone else is of the other gender. Pretend your car is broken when you've only loosened a spark plug wire and ask that sexy security guard for a boost or ask him for a ride if he's going your way. Desk plaque, single and available. If you want to look like a sexy single, hang up a picture of you partying it up, looking like funky happening single. If you get involved in an office romance, don't make the next mistake and talk work talk with your beau after work. If you're gay and start a romance at work, be especially discreet because it's a homophobic world. Love and sex at work slash office romance 4. The workplace is almost like school was. You check out the people around you. Some grow on you. Many relationships are not incredible love at first sight things. People get to know each other at work little by little then develop relationships. They have that common ground. Having said that, you have to watch it. If you're the boss, remember, you have a certain power over people that you should not abuse. Unless you love someone, a casual affair at work can be tricky because the girl almost always wants to go steady. Some companies ask workers to sign love contracts which require them to tell their boss if they're having a workplace romance and inform them. When they break up. Other companies have policies against in-office relationships. Know your company policy on dating other employees. Act professional at work, even if you're the boss. By acting love-dovey in front of others, you're creating tension. There will be complications at work if the relationship ends. Don't hide the relationship but be discreet about it at work which means no PDAs. If you are thinking about starting a relationship with a subordinate, you have power over them. They can easily accuse you of sexual harassment. If you want advice, try your human resource department at work. Make your intentions known to your intimate co-worker. Is it just for fun or is it for love? If you're trying to sleep your way up the career ladder, the boss might figure it out then use you for sex with false promises. You can't fool your co-workers about a workplace romance. Do not leave for vacation at exactly the same time. Share your work relationship with your boss not in a way that comes off like you want permission. 
just tell him so he knows. Tell him you will behave in a professional, ethical, and responsible manner. It won't affect the quality of your work. Don't play out your relationship over the phone or office email. It's okay to have a close platonic friends of the opposite sex at work but these friendships have a way of expanding into more intimate relationships. When the workplace is a buzzing place of gossip, don't pay attention to it. People who gossip do so because they're messed up somewhere along the way. Happy, fulfilled people don't need to gossip. If co-workers are traveling together as a part of the job and you don't want intimacy, don't drink alcohol and don't go to the other guy's room or invite him into yours. Work is like a homogeneous dating pool. The other workers are like you in some way by virtue of being there. Your boss might seem sexy because of his or her position of power but after the awe wears off, you will probably think what were you thinking. The British are famous for their abilities at keeping a professional distance. We call it restraint. If you don't want to encourage a relationship, do not be personal or too personable. Keep the topic on the job at hand. If somebody with a monogamous mindset wants to get fresh with me, I just tell them I'm not monogamous, I'm not what they're looking for and most girls over 25 are looking for a monogamous relationship. Don't lead people on. They have expectations so when you don't deliver, they will turn on you. Your job is the most important thing. You do not have to do things you don't want to do to try to get others to like you. You don't have to give in to bullies trying to manipulate you. Just tell them to fuck off and don't bother you with their bullshit. Do good work no matter what. If someone acts inappropriately with you, start keeping a log of incidents and document any witnesses present. Your boss signs your paychecks. He is not your friend. Don't talk about controversial topics like politics, sex, religion, and relationship gossip. It just gets you in trouble. Mind your own business. If someone married is having an affair, ignore it. If you don't want to get involved with someone, don't get into situations where you are both alone. Intimacy often builds up slowly, one step at a time. A workplace spouse or close co-worker. A work spouse is someone of the opposite sex that you befriend at work to be close with. It could be platonic or start out as platonic then lead to intimacy as you get closer. This is how affairs often start. You're married at home but your spouse doesn't give you the love you want. You spend a lot of time at work where you befriend this other person who becomes your trusted ally. Just be aware that this is how intimacy starts at work regardless of if you're married or single. After the first intimate encounter, everything changes. You're now a couple, at least at work. You now have two issues. 1. Who is your real love, the person at work or the person at home? 2. What do you do, continue on towards an intimate relationship or leave it at a friend at work level? You have three options. 1. Tell this close friend at work to keep it at a professional, friendship level. 2. Have the intimate relationship. 3. Keep it in a gray area, continue to flirt and have fun but don't do anything beyond that, at least not for now. Is this type of flirting cheating? That is up to you to decide. The so-called power couple. If two people are ambitious workaholics and marry, chances are they will still be married to their work and like the constant stimulation. These people are better suited for casual sex with different partners. They get bored with each other and compete with each other. When one gets a big raise or promotion, the other gets jealous. Whose career comes first, you or your spouses? Who moves when spouse A gets a new job in another state? Not so long ago the man's career always took precedence but not anymore. Why should you give up a great job just because your husband got a good job elsewhere? Why are people so insistent on being monogamous for life, at least in theory? If you're ambitious and self-centered, accept who you are. Don't try to fit into a monogamous relationship if that is not you. On a more positive note, even though you're both successful on your own, your true power comes from your shared strength but it is usually a power struggle because that's the nature of capitalist thinking, competitive people. 
sexy dress at work. If you dress sexy at work you will be perceived as a frivolous airhead. You will not be taken be seriously nor promoted. There is appropriate dress for every situation. When you go to work, you're there to work not to show off your body. Save it for the nightclub or the mall. Somebody did a study of fashionably dressed politicians. They found that the men who were quite interested in looking stylish had a habit of not getting re-elected. The implication is that vain people are not good, dedicated workers because they're too busy worrying about how they look. Granted, if you're a young woman interested in landing a husband and not too ambitious then the job doesn't mean much to you beyond a place to look for good men so if that's your goal, by all means dress sexy if you want. Office Romance Workplace Sex Websites Books about office romance are at hashtag 646.77, Hashtag 658.3 or HQ801 at the library. Relaxedworkplace.com slash blog slash front underscore page underscore news slash sexual hyphen tension hyphen at hyphen work. Newshe.com slash sex and the workplace one dot shtml. Amine.org slash press slash amanu slash workplace underscore dating dot html. Careerjournal.com slash report slash romance. Fighting in Relationships Argument Websites QueenDOM.com slash article slash love slash arguing underscore intro dot html ACLU.org slash get equal slash FFM, fighting for marriage Community.lifehack.org slash story slash 20051222 slash article slash how underscore to underscore stop underscore the underscore fighting underscore in underscore your underscore relationships FamilyFight.com HealthDuo.com slash how hyphen to hyphen stop hyphen the hyphen a 7178.html Lifehacker.com slash software slash relationships PositiveConflicts.com QueenDOM.com slash arguing underscore style.html Relationship-helps-and-advice.com slash fightingfair.html relationships.com.au slash advice slash fair underscore fighting dot asp utexas.edu slash student slash cmhc slash booklet slash fighting slash fighting dot html